playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. The Mox Masters Invitational is coming this October 20th through the 22nd in Columbus, Ohio. Qualified players compete in the $10,000 CEDH tournament. There is a last chance qualifier on Friday, October 20th. Earn cash and points and the top four automatically qualify for the Invitational. Didn't qualify? No problem. There is a CDH Open Tournament on Saturday, October 21st. Come and compete for $4,000 in prizes. Sunday, we will have booster drafts and on-demand CDH pods and free play all day long. Check out the link below for more info. It is going to be a great weekend and we hope to see you there. Before we get into today's video, we wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor, HelloFresh. We as Magic players love efficiency, and that's why we recommend HelloFresh. Instead of trying to plan out your grocery list, just pick out the meals you want and HelloFresh takes care of the rest. It allows you to spend less time planning out your meals and more time brewing your decks. Magic players love variety, and HelloFresh delivers with 40 recipes and over 100 seasonal and convenience items to choose from each week. With so much variety, there are options for everyone and every lifestyle. I don't personally like eating the same thing over and over, so I enjoy that I can try new things all the time. Looking for an easy way to eat well and save money this year? Cut back on expensive takeout and delivery and get started with HelloFresh. It is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. HelloFresh is not just for dinner. In fact, HelloFresh has you covered for every mealtime occasion. From snacks and easy lunches to seasonal celebrations and festive gatherings, HelloFresh delivers. Give HelloFresh a try today. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGPWPSEP50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. A big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now. Let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Matt, Paladin Tano's Solemn Survivor. This deck seeks to create tokens, copy them with his commander, and then overwhelm opponents with value. Matt's opening hand contains a Reanimate, Toxic Deluge, Mox Amber, Swan Song, Talisman of Progress, Underground Sea, and a Smothering Tithe. Next, we have Zeb, Paladin Lotho, Corrupt Sheriff. This deck seeks to gain advantage with its commander before executing an Aristocrat's Loop to drain the table. Zeb's opening hand contains a Dance of the Dead, Mana Crypt, Forbidden Orchard, Entomb, and his London Mulligans are Swords of Plowshares, Swamp, and a Soul Ring. After that, we have TK, Pounding Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. This deck seeks to use its commander's ability to tutor out a bunch of legendary creatures, chain together a combo, and close out the game. TK's opening hand contains a Tainted Pact, Animatu the Fate Stitcher, Tarnished Citadel, Underground Sea, Worldly Tutor, Swan Song, and a Jeweled Lotus. Finally, we have Drake, Pounding Xur the Enchanter. No, it's not the year 2017. This deck seeks to resolve the Necropotence, put a ton of cards into his hand, and then win at instant speed on the end step. Drake's opening hand contains a Hallowed Fountain, Lotus Petal, Mox Opal, Arcane Signet, Helm of Awakening, and a Force of Negation. Without further ado, let's kick off his watery, willful, wishful way. Matt won the Mannequin Challenge and gets to start us off. Matt draws a card for turn and plays an Underground Sea. He casts a Mox Amber and passes. Zeb draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He casts a Mana Crypt. He passes. TK draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks it to help cast his commander, Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. He ends his turn. Drake draws and plays a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Mox Opal. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts an Arcane Signet. He casts a Sensei's Divining Top. With a wicked turn one complete, Drake gives the turn to Matt. Matt draws and plays an Ottawara Soaring City as his land for turn. He casts a Talisman of Progress. He passes. At the end of Matt's turn, Zeb taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Matt a spirit to cast in Tomb. He fetches up a Ranger Captain of Eos into his graveyard. The turn moves to Zeb. During its upkeep, Zeb wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Bright Climb Pathway. He taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Drake a spirit to help cast his commander, Lotho, Corrupt Sheriff. He ships the turn. TK draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He moves the combat and attacks Drake with Sisse. Drake takes it and TK passes. At the end of TK's turn, Drake activates his Sensei's top, looking at and rearranging the top three. Drake draws and plays a Gemstone Caverns. He casts his commander, Zer the Enchanter. Drake passes to Matt. Matt draws and plays a Scrubland. He casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing a spirit as an additional cost, adding four black. He casts Toxic Deluge, paying four life. Lotho triggers, Zeb loses life and creates a treasure. Then all creatures get minus four, minus four, wiping the board. Next, Matt casts Reanimate, targeting Ranger Captain of Eos in Zeb's graveyard. In response, TK casts Swan Song, targeting Reanimate. Reanimate is countered, and Matt creates a 2 2 bird. Next, Matt casts his commander, Tano, Solemn Survivor. With nothing else, Matt gives the turn to Zeb. During his upkeep, Zeb loses his mana crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a flooded strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a scrubland onto the battlefield. He recasts his commander, Lotho, Corrupt Sheriff. He taps for Forbidden Orchard, giving TK a spirit to cast Dance of the Dead. Dance resolves, and Zeb returns Ranger Captain to the battlefield tapped. Ranger Captain enters, and Zeb fetches up an Esper Sentinel into his hand. He casts Esper Sentinel. Zeb passes. At the end of Zeb's turn, TK taps his Tarnished Citadel to cast Worldly Tutor. Esper triggers, and Zeb draws. In response, Matt casts Swansong, paying the Esper tax. 
Tudor is countered and TK creates a 2-2 bird. The turn moves to TK. TK draws and plays a Gaia's Cradle. He taps to turn his Citadel to help cast Katilda, Dawnheart Prime. He moves to combat and attacks Zeb with his bird and Drake with his spirit. They both take it and TK gives the turn to Drake. Drake draws and activates his Sensei's top, rearranging the top three. He plays a Forbidden Orchard and ships the turn. Matt draws and casts Smothering Tithe. Esper triggers and Zeb draws. He moves to combat and attacks Drake with his bird. Drake takes it and Matt ends his turn. During his upkeep, Zeb wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, Smothering Tithe triggers, and Matt creates a treasure. In his first main phase, Zeb plays a Gemstone Mine. He taps for Forbidden Orchard, giving Drake a spirit to help cast Necropotence. In response, Drake hard casts Force of Negation. Esper triggers and Zeb draws. Tithe triggers and Matt creates a treasure, then Force counters and exiles Necropotence. Next, Zeb casts Blind Obedience. Lotho triggers and Zeb loses a life and creates a treasure. All through, Zeb ships the turn. TK draws, Tide triggers, and Matt creates a treasure. TK casts Esper Sentinel. He taps Tarnus Citadel to help recast his commander, Sisse. Lotho triggers, and Zeb loses a life and creates a treasure. He moves to combat and attacks Zeb with his spirit and his bird. Zeb takes it, and TK passes the turn. Drake draws, Tide triggers, and Matt creates a treasure. He plays an Underground Sea for turn. He taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Zeb a spirit to help recast his commander, Zer the Enchanter. Drake ships the turn. Matt draws and moves to combat. He attacks Drake with his bird. Drake takes it, and in his second main phase, Matt plays a Polluted Delta. He holds open mana and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Zeb wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and pays for Smothering Tithe. Zeb plays a Silent Clearing and passes the turn. TK draws, Tithe triggers, and Matt creates a treasure. TK casts Fae Burrow Elder. He moves to combat and attacks Zeb with Sisse. Zeb blocks with a Spirit, and TK passes to Drake. Drake draws, Tithe triggers, and Matt creates a treasure. He moves to combat and attacks Matt with Zer. Zer triggers and Drake fetches up a Necropotence onto the battlefield. Matt takes it and in his second main phase, Drake casts Helm of Awakening. Both Espers trigger and TK and Zeb draw. Tithe triggers and Matt creates two treasures. Helm resolves and Drake activates Necropotence 25 times, paying 25 life, exiling 25 cards. He moves to his end step and Necropotence triggers. In response, Matt cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He activates Taunos, creating a copy of a treasure and milling two. Then Drake puts the Necro cards into his hand. Still in the end step, Drake casts Vampiric Tutor. Lotho triggers, Zeb loses a life and creates a treasure. Then Drake fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He activates Sensei's top, drawing a card and putting top on top. Tide triggers and Matt creates a treasure. Drake casts Born Upon a Wind. Born resolves and Drake draws. Tide triggers and Matt creates a treasure. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Blind Obedience. In response, Zeb activates Silent Clearing, sacking it and drawing a card. Tithe triggers and Matt creates a treasure. In response, Zeb casts Soul Partition, targeting Helm of Awakening. Blind Obedience triggers and Zeb extorts it, with each opponent losing one life and Zeb gaining three. Esper triggers and TK draws. Tide triggers and Matt creates a treasure. In response, Drake taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Zeb a spirit to flash in a Wish Claw Talisman. It enters tap through Blind Obedience, then Soul Partition exiles Helm of Awakening. Then Chain resolves, Blind Obedience is bounced, and Zeb doesn't continue the chain. Still in the end step, Drake flashes in a Mana Crypt. He flashes in a Mox Amber. He flashes in a Sensei's Divining Top. He activates Top, drawing a card and putting Top on Top. Tide triggers and Matt creates a treasure. He flashes in a Mystic Remora. With nothing else, Drake discards the hand size, exiling the discarded cards. Matt draws and moves to combat. He attacks Drake with his bird. Drake takes it and Matt passes. During his upkeep, Zeb loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws, Tide triggers and Matt creates a treasure. Zeb plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He recasts Blind Obedience. Esper and Remora trigger, Drake draws, Tide triggers, Matt creates a treasure, then Zeb pays for Esper. Then Blind Obedience resolves. Next, Zeb taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Drake a spirit to cast Leon and Relic Warder, extorting it through Blind Obedience. Since Drake is only at one life, he dies. Lotho triggers, Zeb loses a life and creates a treasure. Relic Warder enters and exiles TK's Esper Sentinel. Finished up, Zeb passes to TK. TK draws, Tide triggers, and Matt creates a treasure. In his main phase, he plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He taps Fabor Elder to help activate Sisse, fetching up Tyvar, Jubilant Brawler, onto the battlefield. He activates Tyvar, untapping Fabor Elder. He taps Tarnus Citadel and Fabor to help activate Sisse, fetching up Lavinia, Azorius Renegade, onto the battlefield. He casts a Noble Hierarch. He casts a Sol Ring, paying the Esper tax. Lotho triggers, Zeb loses a life, and creates a treasure. TK moves to combat and attacks Zeb with his bird. Hierarch's Exalted triggers and the bird gets plus one plus one. Zeb takes it and TK ends his turn. At the end of TK's turn, Matt activates Thanos, creating a copy of his treasure and milling two. Matt draws and knows that they are dead to TK if it gets to his turn, so he bands together with Zeb to try and find some interaction between the two of them. Matt moves to combat and attacks Tyvar with his bird. Tyvar takes it and in his second main phase, Matt casts Mystic Remora. Esper triggers and Zeb draws. Ty triggers and Zeb pays. Remora resolves and Matt sends the turn to Zeb. During his upkeep, Zeb loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws, Tide triggers, and Matt creates a treasure. Still in the draw step, to give Zeb another draw, Matt casts Dark Ritual. 
Esper triggers and Zeb draws. Tide triggers and Matt creates a treasure. Dark Ritual resolves and Matt adds 3 black. In his main phase, Zeb's Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Mana Confluence for turn. He casts Bolas' Citadel. Remore triggers and Matt draws. Zeb pays 8 life to help cast Hoarding Broodlord off of the top of his library through Citadel. Lotho triggers, Zeb loses a life and creates a treasure. Unfortunately for Zeb, Lavinia triggers too. Since no mana was spent to cast the spell, Hoarding Broodlord is countered. Zeb now realizes his mistake, but knows he must keep feeding Matt to help find some sort of answer. So Zeb casts Jewel Lotus off of the top of his library through Citadel. Lavinia and Remora trigger, Matt draws, and Jewel Lotus is countered. He pays a life to cast Culling the Weak through Citadel, sacrificing a spirit as an additional cost. Remora triggers, and Matt draws. Lavinia triggers, countering Culling the Weak. With nothing else to do, Zeb passes to TK. TK draws, Tithe triggers, and Matt creates a treasure. TK taps Faber Earl to help activate Sisse. Zeb asks Matt if he drew into anything that could help stop TK, but unfortunately Matt didn't find what he needed. Sisse's ability resolves and TK fetches up a Selbala, Heart of the Wilds, onto the battlefield. He activates Tybar, untapping Selbala. He taps Cradle, then activates Selbala. He activates Sisse, fetching up a Derevi, Imperial Tactician, onto the battlefield tapped. Derevi enters and untaps Selvala. He activates Selvala, adding a mana to activate Sisse, fetching up an Emil the Blessed onto the battlefield. He activates Emil, flickering Derevi. Derevi enters, untapping Selvala. He activates Selvala, adding more mana. He presents a loop of flickering Derevi through Emil and then untapping Selvala when Derevi enters, adding infinite mana. He activates Sisse, fetching up a Mount Doom onto the battlefield. He presents another loop of activating Mount Doom, dealing one to each opponent, then flickering Derevi to untap Mount Doom. He does this over and over, until the table is dead, and TK wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a match. Congrats to TK on his win. He demonstrated a perfect example of patience and timing. He knew exactly when to go for his win, and exactly how his deck worked. He knew that he had to pilot through blind obedience and knew the exact lines on how to do it. The most valuable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Blind Obedience. This card made it nearly impossible for anyone to go for their wins. It was able to stop Drake from winning on his instep, it also made TK's line more complex to execute, and of course, it even killed Drake. This card is so unassuming, but can slow down opponents and even kill the table with infinite loops. Well that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.